So hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Galakras 10 man heroic in the Siege of Ogrimmar raid and this is the Boom King guide. And this fight is essentially the same on heroic, there is one new addition to normal mode basically and that is the fact that the goblins that are trying to break into the towers are now killable okay every now and then grunts will jump down and will try to kill the goblins. If they succeed another goblin has to go in and it resets the percentage so it will take a lot longer and your raid will take some unnecessary damage from the archers and from the drakes. And of course it's heroic mode so everything has a bit more health and hits a bit harder. Now these two things even though they're not amazing huge changes make this fight really viable for boomkins and stuff like that. Because on normal mode if you have competent raid mates you will have stuff like arms warriors, DKs, you will have paladins, you will have elemental shamans and they will just cleave the living shit out of these waves. Well, that's not gonna happen on heroic mode, okay? You can dot them up and your dots will actually do something, you will get some star search proc. It's not like on normal mode where if you have a couple of competent raid mates, you just feel useless because you can't get any star search procs and everything is dying insanely fast. And let's look at the talents. So, Feline Swiftness, I feel, is the best choice on this fight because this placer beast and wild charts are not very useful and the passive movement speed is always good when you're running up the tower when you're going down the tower when you have to get out of stuff when you have to run towards the demolisher and all the good stuff so feel and swiftness really good level 30 Sarah's gift i feel is really good due to its passive nature it just deals you don't have to do anything and unless you're doing some insane batshit crazy soaking tactic, Ysera's Gift will win on this fight. It's really good in phase 1 and phase 2. Level 45 talents, I don't feel like they're helping you in any way, shape or form of this fight. Fairy Swarm will annoy the shit out of your tanks. Mass Entanglement will annoy the shit out of your tanks. And Typhoon will annoy the shit out of your tanks. So, nope. Level 60 incarnation, yes. This is an AoE fight and force of nature is not very strong on aoe fights incarnation wins on aoe fights force of nature on single target can be better if used properly but incarnation for the aoe fights level 75 disorienting roar is not very good because it only has a 10 yard range and mighty bash is a melee attack so ursus vortex will help your tanks with keeping the death ball in one spot and for level 90 i feel nature's vigil is the way to go on heroic mode in the second phase you can't really stop doing damage and start casting heals with heart of the wild and nature's vigil is a good compromise if used properly with incarnation and bloodlust you will do a nice amount of healing as well as nice amount of damage now let's talk about a couple of tips so first of all you should be in the group that's running up the towers and there's a simple reason for that you have stampeding roar and stampeding roar is absolutely amazing okay as soon as the group is ready to run up the tower you should use stampeding roar so you can get up there faster you can kill all the mobs faster and you can shoot down the drakes that actually do damage on heroic mode tip number two ursul's vortex should be pretty much used on cooldown on this fight as soon as your tanks have the death bow set up, you should throw down Ursus Vortex just in case one of the mobs decides to go for a walk, he will get thrown back and the tanks can get aggro much easier. Next thing is Nature's Vigil should be used when the damage starts to go up and that's usually when you're going up the tower, okay? How I managed my cooldowns was as soon as we pulled I used Incarnation, Nature's Vigil, Celestial Alignment, you know, normal opening to just blitz the first wave so we have some time to prepare for the second wave then I used my cooldowns on the first tower then we jumped down then I saved my cooldowns for the last phase this is how we had it you kinda have to figure out your own system because I don't know how fast you can actually get through this fight next tip is pretty obvious tranquility should be used in the last phase okay if you can avoid using it in the first phase please do okay in the last phase tranquility will help you quite a bit because the damage on heroic mode is pretty damn high now let's talk about symbiosis because symbiosis on this fight is really really dodgy it can be actually really bad for your raid so there is a bug in the second phase as you have the orb flying through people and gives them stacks in order for it to do less damage when it actually explodes if you reset your stacks with Cloak of Shadows or if you prevent the applications of this stack with either Cloak of Shadows or Anti-Magic Shell, a bug might happen where you won't be able to get any more stacks in this fight. Which means 
that it doesn't matter what you do, you won't get any stacks and the orb will explode for more damage. This also happens with Death Knights if they use Anti-Magic Shell and Rogues when they use Cloak of Shadows. Okay, so tell them. It's really bad. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, okay? Once I reset my stacks with Cloak of Shadows and it was fine, I was able to get more stacks, but on our second pull I wasn't, so be really careful when using those two particular spells. I would recommend getting Undying Resolve from a Warlock because it won't prevent you from getting any stacks and it won't reset your stacks, but it will still reduce the damage you take, so Warlock, Symbiosis, amazing on this fight. Or you can put it on a Shadow Priest and he gets Tranquility. And now let's talk about a couple of combat tips. Combat tips, huh? Sounds pretty cool. So, combat tips. What I found out yielded the best results was to basically ignore the uneclipsed dot for about 50% of this fight. Okay, so I was just moving back and forth between eclipses. When I was in solar eclipse, I was dropping sunfire on everything. And when I moved back to lunar eclipse, I was dropping moonfire on everything. Until we had about three mobs left, then I started dropping both dots on each mob. Now, if you have cooldowns, of course, you want to dot up as much as you can. But if you have Incarnation and Nature's Vigil, until you get Celestial Alignment, I would still recommend using only the Eclipsed dot, okay? I feel like it's a waste to dot like five or six targets with an Uneclipsed dot. Okay, with Celestial Alignment, you can get both dots up with just one global cooldown. But if you have like six mobs, that's 12 global cooldowns and that's quite a bit. So basically ignore the uneclipsed dot if you have more than three targets and I think you will do a lot of damage on this fight. I was enjoying it quite a bit. Now let's talk about Bloodlust and Bloodlust, I can't really tell you much about Bloodlust, okay? In the second phase, you definitely want a Bloodlust in the second phase and it depends on your raid. If you have a lot of damage, you will Bloodlust sooner. If you don't have that much damage, you will Bloodlust, you know, around 20%. So, of course, ask your raid leader about Bloodlust. Where are we gonna Bloodlust? I need to save my cooldowns, I need to have Potion and all this good stuff, okay? So make sure you have Incarnation, Nature's Vigil and Celestial Alignment for your Bloodlust. And the last tip is don't stand around, okay? You might get into a situation when there is nothing for you to do, you know, you have no mobs, you're waiting for the next wave and you're just standing around, you're doing nothing. That is the worst thing you can do. You can either pre-plant your mushrooms and then wait for a solar eclipse to detonate them to get nice amount of burst damage, or you can throw rejuvenation on people. Okay, when you're standing around, even if they're not taking damage, as the mobs are coming in, they will start taking damage. So start throwing rejuvenation on people, just random. And what I like to do is when we're running up the tower, I like to dot mobs as we're running up. I like to pop stump eating roar, then dot as many mobs as I can as we're running up, and then start throwing rejuvenation on my group. Okay, so on the tank, on the healer, on the three DPS, that will go up the tower. So when we get up the tower, we're on full health, and we can start bashing them in the face really hard. And that's it from me for this boss. I thank you all for watching and listening. I wish you good luck with downing this boss and I will see you next time. Bye bye.